Hello everyone, welcome to Legacy Ace Academy. In this video, we will be talking about freebies and the cost of fiscal profligacy. Okay, fiscal profligacy is a key term that is used whenever a government mismanages its funds. For example, whenever a government uses the public money for the purpose that it is not supposed to be used, then that particular issue is called as fiscal profligacy. Here, in this video, we will be talking about the states that are mismanaging its funds. What is the context? You can see here, the Chief Minister of Delhi, when he was uh, about to contest the elections in Punjab, Punjab, in his election manifesto, he came up with something called as, if there are three women in a family, that's a daughter, daughter-in-law, and the mother-in-law, if there are three women in family, then all these three women would be getting 1000 rupees each which will make it 3000 rupees for that particular family okay this is per month this is one case of fiscal profligacy the second case of fiscal profligacy that you can see here is a farm loan waiver that was announced in the state of karnataka okay any farm loan waiver for that matter will come under the tag of fiscal profligacy because the taxpayers money is not meant for the loan waivers. How did the issue emerge now? So what happened all of a sudden? Why is this issue of the states mismanaging its funds is an issue now? Senior bureaucrats who were involved in the meeting with the prime minister, they were of the opinion if the states continue mismanaging their funds, then some of the states would go down the way of Sri Lanka. Okay, recently you have seen the financial crisis that happened in Sri Lanka and the high levels of inflation. So if the states continue to mismanage their funds, then some of the states would become financially instable and this would write to financial crisis. Okay, this is what some of the senior bureaucrats who were a part of meeting with the Honorable Prime Minister opined about the financial state of the states. What are freebies? Let's see, what are these freebies? See, for example, any transfer payment that is happening from the side of government to the public without any exchange of service, that is called as freebie. For example, unemployment allowance, okay? Unemployment allowance is also a part of freebies and uh, the Aam Admi Party in the Punjab earlier that we have discussed. If there are three women, then all three women would be getting 3K combined, 3000 rupees. This is an example of freebies. Any transfer payment for that matter, which is given free by the government to the public are called as freebies. They are free stuff. What are the problems? See, it's good that government is providing money to people. So what are the problems associated with it? The first one, are freebies sustainable? How long can the government afford to do it? The government, in order to win the election, is promising it as of now. So how long can government do that? Is it is it sustainable? Can the government do it throughout the lifetime? If the average age of a person is around 60 or 65 years, okay, can government do this for the entire 60 or 65 years? If government afford to do this, then will this incentivize people who are working hard? Okay, all these questions are arised when we talk about the sustainability of freebies. The second one, is it the best possible use of public money? See, the main point of the government's financial mandate is the redistribution. It will collect taxes from the people and redistribute it among the people who can't help themselves. That is the main mandate of the financial powers of government. So here, when we talk about public money, the main intention of public money is the creation of infrastructure okay infrastructure that is the formation of roads railways bridges ports okay all these these creation of infrastructure will act as a ripple effect and this infrastructure creation will lead to growth if the government is diverting its public money from the infrastructure creation to the provision of freebies, then it is called as fiscal profligacy and this will not lead to growth provided this will lead to the tendency of people being lazy to work. 
should not there be some checks on how much can be spent on them okay as of now there are no checks even if uh, there is an act called frbm which we will be discussing it in the later part of the video so frbm is not effective enough to check the state's expenditure on the freebies lack of investment on the social and physical infrastructure this will be a problem down the line and this will not lead to sustainable growth so if the states are diverting lot of money to provision of freebies then how are the states managing their finances okay one thing the state and the central government is worrying about we all have heard something called as physical deficit okay physical deficit if for example for people who have not studied what physical deficit is let's imagine your revenue is 100 rupees and your expenditure is 105 rupees okay so this extra 5 rupees that you are you are spending how are you spending it by borrowing okay this amount of extra 5 rupees that you borrow to spend is called as physical deficit so one thing one indicator that the central and the state governments are afraid of is fiscal deficit as of now the fiscal deficit with respect to india is around 6.4% of gdp in order to reduce this fiscal deficit or in order to keep this fiscal deficit in check this governments have resorted to something called as off budget financing what this off budget financing is if the government directly borrows from a foreign institution or from the domestic market then that will be a part of fiscal deficit provided what governments are doing now is you have heard of psus that is public sector units for example let's assume bsnl so bsnl is a public sector unit so bsnl wants to create infrastructure it wants to create it wants to lay lines optic fiber cables and also it wants to create the mobile network towers so the government which is being the shareholder of the psu that is bsnl the government has to provide funds for the expansion of the service now what government will do is instead of providing money to bsnl the government will ask this psu to borrow money which will not be a part of fiscal deficit so this is how the government is moving away from its responsibilities so this money that is borrowed by the bsnl will be in the books of the accounts of bsnl and not in the accounts of government provided this has to be the government funded infrastructure project this would become the bsnl's own infrastructure project which will not be reflected in the books of government this is called as off budget financing okay this is called as off budget financing if such off budget financing is more then the debt of the government will not be reflected anywhere and this will lead to unsustainable practices and this will lead to financial crisis at the end so this is all about the off budget financing and the alternative ways of raising money so if all this is happening how do we control this off budget financing okay is there any mechanism through which this off budget financing there should be a limit to off budget financing how can we do it first one is the opposition party so the responsibility of the opposition party is to keep these financial indicators at check so in india instead of doing it the opposition party has taken a role of opposing everything that the ruling government does okay the main aim of the opposition party has become like whatever it is if it, even if it is good for the people or bad for the people the opposition party is present only to oppose okay that has become the norm these days so instead the opposition parties should work responsibly and should keep in check of such off budget finances and the financial mismanagement by the ruling party second one is the cag audit that is controller and the auditor general of india and this cag audit of the states which is not happening in an effective way so this cag audit should be responsible and this should act as deterrent for the state government in order to reduce their borrowing market which will act as an invisible hand would have studied something about invisible hand and the competition and how the prices would be in check if there is competition so similarly for any state for any state if the fiscal deficit is high if the off budget financing is high then the market then the market 
should act accordingly because of which the interest rates would be high or this would disincentivize the state from borrowing money from the market. The market should act on the data that it has on the finances of the state. The fourth one is the FRBM Act that is Fiscal Responsibility and Budgetary Management Act. So what is this FRBM Act? FRBM Act which was enacted in the year 2003 provides targets for fiscal deficit and the revenue deficit of state and the center. It also says the debt of center and state combined should be less than 60%. Out of this 60%, 40% should be of the center, 20% should be of the state by the year 2024 and 25. This is one of the important target that was set by FRBM Act in the year 2003. The state government should limit their borrowing to 20% of their GDP, but, but both combined it should be 60%. As of now, both combined it is somewhere around 80% with the state's contribution of somewhere around 28 to 29% of the GDP. So these fiscal deficit targets or this borrowing targets or the, this debt target has to be revised and proper channelization of this reduction of debt has to happen. So what should be the measures that the state has to follow in order to get it to 20%? This should be mandated. Okay, This should be mandated. FRBM Act will not include the off-budget financing. So there should be an amendment to FRBM Act which will include the off-budget finances also. So what is the solution? The first solution is amend the FRBM Act amend the FRBM Act because it was enacted in the year 2003 and uh, there are evidences where the FRBM Act was not followed. So in order to make it more effective, amend the FRBM Act and make sure that the FRBM Act will also include off-budget finances, okay, off-budget finances. We all have studied in our polity section, the center-state relations, the state cannot borrow without the permission of the center. Here, the center's control over the state's finances should be more stricter and central government should mandate how and when the states can finance or states can get the loan and how the, that particular loan should be used by the state. Okay, State's autonomy with respect to the usage of the public funds or the borrowed money should be regulated by the central government. Third one, use of financial emergency, Article 360 of the Constitution talks about financial emergency. So till now, there is no instance where the financial emergency was applied in India. So this has to be used. If any state is mismanaging its finances or its public money, then it should be a, the responsibility of the president to impose the financial emergency and make sure that the things are going right. When we talk about freebies, when we talk about freebies, this is something that we need to keep in mind. Instead of providing free money, money for nothing to people, give a man a fish and you would feed him for a day, teach a man how to fish and you would feed him for life. Instead of providing money to people, we have to provide them employment Okay, and we have to provide them skills from which they can earn their livelihood. Okay, providing free money or an unemployment allowance or transfer payments will be will not be sustainable because of which the creation of employment and the development of skills should become the priority of the government in place of providing freebies. Thanks a lot for watching the video. For more such enriching content, please subscribe to Legacy S Academy. Have a nice day. Thank you.